I'm flying 11 flights in 20 days across the world in first or business class by only using 420,000 points and 1500 US dollars. If this interests you and you want to know about my thought process of how I booked these flights, watch this video. My main motivation behind this trip was to fly first class in Qatar Airways, the world's best airline for 2022 on an A380 between Doha and Sydney. Qatar A380 has an amazing first class and they fly this plane only to four destinations from Doha. London, Paris, Bangkok and Sydney. I chose Doha to Sydney because that was the longest flight among the four and why not? I started looking on American Airlines website for the award space on Qatar and was lucky to find one for 100,000 points and 58 US dollars in March 2023. In fact, this is the cheapest way to book the award space on Qatar, but I did not have any American Airlines miles. I was able to find the same space on Qatar's website, but Qatar wanted 105,000 points and 132 US dollars. Since Qatar adopted Avios as their reward currency, I was able to link up my British Airways account with Qatar and book this much anticipated award flight. Since I live in LA, I have to find positioning flights to get me to Doha and a return flight from Sydney to LA. I had some Amex membership rewards points and Chase Ultimate Rewards points in my account. I decided to go all in and do a three week business class vacation around the world. Not exactly an around the world trip, but more like out there and back. I started looking for flights to get me to Doha. Turkish Airlines seemed to be a good option and I've heard several good things about Turkish's business class. A business class ticket from LA to Doha with a stopover in Istanbul was 120,000 points and $310 in surcharges. Surprisingly, for the same date, I was able to find an award flight on Turkish from San Francisco to Doha for a mere 47,000 points and 240 US dollars. Now the problem was, it's not possible to transfer American Express Membership Rewards Points or Chase Ultimate Rewards Points to Miles and Smiles to book a ticket on Turkish Airlines. But Citibank transfers to Turkish's Miles and Smiles. That's when Citi also offered 80,000 welcome bonus points for the city premier card. So I ended up getting that card. I would be able to get this welcome bonus points only after my first statement is generated. I wasn't sure if the award space would last for one month. I logged into Expert Flyer and found out that there were award, five award seats available for my date. I also set up an alert on Expert Flyer to email me if the number of seats dropped below two. Thank goodness the award flights were still available and I got the city points and I was able to book Turkish business from San Francisco to Doha. I was also able to book a first class ticket on Alaska Airlines from Los Angeles to San Francisco for a mere 119 US dollars, a cash fare, a positioning flight for another positioning flight. Okay, so now getting to Doha to take my dream Qatar flight was finalized. I just had to find a way to get back from Sydney to Los Angeles. When you think about luxurious first class, another airline that comes to everyone's mind is Emirates. Their game-changing first class suite on the Boeing 777 is phenomenal. It's like having a private hotel room in the sky with temperature controls, mood lighting, virtual windows, soft leather seating, like a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Emirates flies this new 777 only to a few destinations and one of them is Dubai to Geneva. Thanks to one of the Award Travel 201 members for pointing this out to me. I directly logged into Emirates.com and was able to find plenty of first class availability. Emirates wanted 85,000 points, but a huge surcharge around 440 US dollars. Thankfully, Emirates is a transfer partner of Amex and I was able to transfer Amex points to Emirates Skyward Miles to grab this first class ticket. I was quite excited for this flight, but then I also realized that my starting point Dubai was nowhere near Sydney and my ending point Geneva was also not close to Los Angeles. Now I had to find a way to get from Sydney to Dubai. I came across a blog on upgraded points that said some people would argue that Qatar's new Q Suite business class was a better product than their first class. I was able to find a Qatar award flight from Melbourne to Dubai with a stopover in Doha on Qatar's website directly. The first leg from Melbourne to Doha was a Boeing 777 with Q Suites. Bingo! And the second short flight from Doha to Dubai was on an A350 and since it was marketed as a first class flight, I'm hoping I will have access to the Al Safwa Lounge, first class lounge in Doha for the second time. If you don't know what the Al Safwa Lounge is, check it out on YouTube. It's a next worldly lounge. 
I've heard that nothing in the US or Europe comes close to the Al Safwa launch, the first class launch in Doha. Qatar wanted 75,000 avios and 235 US dollars for these two flights, and I converted my Amex membership rewards points to avios and booked this ticket as well. Initially, I was thinking about just taking a bus or a train from Sydney to Melbourne, but again, one of the members of Award Travel 201 found me an amazing deal on British Airways' website. Since British Airways and Qantas are both part of One World Alliance, British Airways sold a Qantas Award seat for 12,500 avios and 27 US dollars. Converted my Amex points again to avios and bought the ticket. Now, the final leg, going back home to Los Angeles. Paris was right there close to Geneva, and I've never been to Paris before, so decided to go and spend some time in Paris, a few days in Paris, and then fly Air France Business to Los Angeles. Started looking for a flight from Geneva to Paris on Air Canada's website to find Star Alliance carriers. Was able to find a Swiss flight and a Lufthansa flight with a stopover in Frankfurt for only 15,000 points and 84 US dollars. Again, converted Amex points to Aeroplan points and booked this ticket. I knew I wouldn't be able to book a La Premiere on Air France, but could at least book a business class ticket on Air France. That was the time when Flying Blue was running promotions to a lot of US destinations, and Los Angeles happened to be one of them. I was able to find a business class ticket for 80,000 points and 340 US dollars. Amex was also running a 20% transfer bonus to transfer to Flying Blue. That worked out in my favor, and I booked the last leg of this massive trip. After booking this last trip on Air France, I noticed that Virgin Atlantic also had award flights from France to LA with a stopover in London. In fact, the ticket was only 76,000 points, about 4,000 points cheaper than Air France and 380 British pounds. Do you think I should have booked Virgin Atlantic instead of Air France? Is Virgin Atlantic business class better than Air France? I mean, the award seat on Virgin is still available and I can always cancel Air France and book Virgin Atlantic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. One of the few things that I was very particular about while booking this trip was lounge access. I wanted to experience the best lounges and these airlines provide their best lounges in their own home territory. Looking forward to experiencing the Turkish lounge in Istanbul, Al Safwa first class lounge in Doha, Qantas business lounge in Sydney, Qantas first class lounge in Melbourne, Emirates first class lounge in Dubai, Swiss lounge in Geneva, Lufthansa lounge in Frankfurt, and last but not the least, the newest Air France business lounge in Paris. This trip is still five months away. I am hoping we will not have another pandemic. I am hoping there will not be any more flight cancellations. I am hoping I will be able to complete this trip successfully. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.